Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. This is CMG Talk. This is Catherine Gallagher. Welcome, welcome, and thanks for joining me today on this Sunday. And I wonder if you are aware of boundaries around you. Now, boundaries can be physical. They can be furniture. You might be sitting behind a desk and whether you're in work or at home, if you have a desk between you and someone else, sometimes that can feel like a barrier or a boundary or it can just feel like it's something you use as a function to sit on or lean on. Sometimes we have doors, don't we, as a boundary for privacy. If you think about a bathroom, we also have emotional and psychological boundaries that we have around us, which we often are aware of, or we become very aware of them, particularly if somebody crosses them. If you think about the pandemic, suddenly we had boundaries imposed on us. We were told it was for your own safety. Hey, we bump elbows, you know, we don't shake hands, we keep a social distance because of the transmission, you know, of virus. We had a lot of boundaries set down. Some people welcomed them because it gave them a sense of security and safety. Others pushed against them because they felt it was an infringement. And some people just don't like boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> so it wouldn't matter what the boundaries were. They were like, don't tell me what to do. Sometimes we don't like to have things imposed on us. Sometimes it's about respect. The other day, someone imposed on my boundary. Someone went and took over something that I had worked and had to go through extensive processes to achieve. And... They just decided that they would use it because they felt they could. And that particular person has done this multiple times. Sometimes people don't consider the impact or they quite frankly don't care the impact it has. If I want it, if I need it, if it makes my life easier or if other people are doing things that are impacting on me, then I feel that's unfair on me and I will then react to that. I will then do something to make my life easier. Boundaries. Boundaries can safeguard us, they can protect us, they can let us understand the world around us, they can help us function or they can be restrictive. Controlling, oppressive. Boundaries. If you think about what boundaries you have. Sometimes we set times for things. You know, this is my bedtime. This is when I want you to be home at night. This is what has to happen at a certain time. Why? Because we need good sleep or because I want to make sure you're safe or because it gives me a sense of purpose or focus. I go to the gym at this time. I have boundaries at this time. If I buy something, I've earned it, I've purchased it and somebody then takes it, tries to take over it, steals it and poses on it, they're crossing a boundary. And yes, also it's called theft. <laughs> People often are aware that when they're doing something, the impact it is having. But sometimes the way they're functioning and operating, they go into what I call justification mode. Well, you know, it's how it is. That just works for me. Or I don't care because my life is difficult, because I've had a hard time, or because I'm not really interested in how my work operates, you know. 
I do enough, turning up and showing up is enough. People go into that mindset, the victimisation mindset, it's called in a clinical setting. The reality is, though, it's a choice. It's a choice. The reality is when people impose on other people's boundaries, when the reverse happens, they don't like it. Because it's a lack of respect. And when someone crosses over your boundaries, it's actually less about you and it's all about them. It says everything about that person. It's not about you, it's about them. Respect, integrity, honesty, thoughtfulness, consideration, compassion, kindness, caring. When someone crosses over boundaries, it says everything about them. It says everything about where they are, what their mindset is, how they think, how they feel, how they function. And often, they're only interested when it's themselves or when it's someone that they actually care about. Too often, people are now saying to me, I can't understand why somebody would do this. What we're really saying is, that's not me. That's not how I am. I wouldn't do that to them. We have an expectation that people treat us the way we would like to be treated ourselves. The reality is, sometimes people say, I am this person, this is how I am. But sometimes we can't treat everybody the same because people are not the same. People are unique individual people. Trust has to be earned. If somebody is behaving badly and you constantly enable that by overlooking and not addressing, you're telling that person it's okay. It's okay to behave like that. But part of the problem We're enabling the problem. We're enabling the behaviour. Until we draw a boundary and say, this is my boundary. And you often find when you're establishing or setting or drawing or pointing out your boundary, people will often say, but is it really that important? Are you not making a big deal about this? That's because... It's not their boundary. (laughs) That's because it doesn't impact on them. And they don't want the hassle. Or they don't really want to be around an environment that's uncomfortable. People often will diminish our boundaries. They'll often undermine our boundaries. They'll often say it's not a big deal. Well, of course it's not a big deal to them. But when it's about us... It's about our respect. It's about being treated with kindness. It's about having people see us and not treat us as if we're invisible. Boundaries matter. Boundaries are important. What we're really saying is, hello, I'm here. See me. Behave as if you see me. And what we're really saying is, treat me the way you would expect to be treated the way you want to be treated. Don't do to me what you wouldn't want done to you. Respect my boundaries. Take care and listen and pay attention because if our boundaries are too firm, people see us as inflexible and unyielding. But if our boundaries are too elasticated, people will cross them all over the place and it can become confusing. In a partner relationship, if you're constantly overlooking or not really holding on to your boundaries, one minute you have a problem with something, the next minute it's not such a big deal and you constantly float back and forward. It's confusing. It's mixed signals. People don't really know where they stand. 
knowing and establishing your boundaries, understanding your core values, understanding what really matters, honesty, integrity, faithfulness, trustworthiness, respect, and being able to hold on and feel that ability to trust. Knowing you, knowing your boundaries, knowing what matters to you helps us to feel as if we're keeping ourselves psychologically, emotionally and physically safe. And often we will cross through our life and we will come across people that will invade our boundaries I remember working alongside someone and they used to hug you when they were in favour. You were in favour. They felt that you were in favour. And then if you were out of favour, they would wag their finger and they would tell you, I'm not hugging you. Is that crossing a boundary? What do you think? Would you expect someone to hug you when they're not your kind of person or they're not your person? They're not in an environment you would expect that to be. It's like if you go out in a social situation and you don't want to drink and people say to you, oh, just have one. You're making it uncomfortable for everybody. You're not fun. People imposing and crossing over your boundaries and trying to impose their values or their views on you. That's why boundaries matter. That's why it is important to be able to say me not drinking doesn't stop you having a drink. You're your person. I am my person. If I choose not to have a drink, respect it. Just as I'm respecting you choosing to have a drink. We're not responsible for other people's choices unless there is a responsibility there when we feel that they are vulnerable, a minor, or when we feel that someone is about to cause harm to someone else. But you will always find people that come into your life Not because you choose them to be in your life, but they happen to live around you. They happen to live next door to you or they happen to work beside you or they become involved in the same hobby, same interest as you. They go to the same faith group as you and they're maybe not your kind of person and they will impose their boundaries. And they often will feel they have the ability, the right to tell you what to do because it's about power, because it's about control, because they want and are only interested in getting their needs met. And what they then do is often is go around and people gather and they try to cross boundaries. They tell everybody why they shouldn't respect your boundaries. They tell everybody what is wrong with you so that they gather the clique, the group on their side. And we know that as bullying And we get that often in a group situation, a community situation, neighbourhood situations, faith group situations, any kind of situation where you get people together in any kind of environment. You will always have people who have this bullying mentality, unfortunately, and they don't like other people's boundaries. (laughs) And they will cross over boundaries. So what do you do? How do you maintain your own peace of mind? 
Sometimes we can't negotiate with people that are unnegotiable. Sometimes we have to go to the people that have the power, that have the ability to make the decisions. I read this morning Steve Jobs' last, I guess, I don't know if it's epiphany, but he wrote about life and he wrote about keeping peace of mind. He wrote about valuing what really mattered, right? And I was reading it and for me, for me, what really matters to me is relationships. And you'll have heard me say this, you know, in my podcasting, if you listen to my podcasts. For me, it's relationships. It's people that matter. Ultimately, it's family, it's friends, it's your partner, if you have a partner, it's, you know, your loved ones. Ultimately, that's why we connect. That's why we want love. We want to have relationships and to feel that our life is being witnessed by someone, by people, and that we have a legacy, that we will be remembered in some way, that our life has a why as a purpose. Yeah? Do you see where I'm going with this? And as I was reading Steve Jobs, you can see it's on the internet, as I was reading Steve Jobs, he said as a billionaire he had acquired so much. But whether you have a £300 bottle of wine or a £30 bottle of wine or whether you have a watch that's a $1,000 or $20 still tells the time. If you have a bottle of wine, it's still a bottle of wine. And yes, you might relate it to the quality But he was saying, whatever car you buy, you know, whether it's a £70,000 car or, you know, 100 grand or £2 million house or whatever it is, it's still a home if you make it or it's just brick and mortar. If you get a car, it still gets you from A to B. Whatever it is, whatever model it is, it's what you make it. And it's what it means to you. What he really was saying, as he explained, you can put so much emphasis on accumulating, acquiring so much, but ultimately, in his final years, he had spent a long time with pancreatic cancer and talking about life. And it really is reflecting on his boundaries, reflecting on his values, his core system, his core values and what ultimately matters. Choose life, be in life, pay attention to what really matters in life because you will always have people around you that try to take away your peace of mind in your life because of how they behave, because of their bad behaviours, the gossiping, the unkindness, the cruelty, the doing things that impose on you because they just want to have and navigate the shortest route to make things easy for them at your expense. But treasure and value and protect your peace of mind. We can spend so long, so long having people with bad behaviours, unkind thoughtless, hurtful behaviours. We can spend so long concentrating on their behaviours and giving them so much power, so much control because they've crossed over our boundaries. Take back control. That doesn't mean to say you have to enable the behaviours. That doesn't mean to say you have to say it's okay. Do what you need to do, but close it down and protect your peace of mind. And focus on your life and what really matters. Stay in your lane. I use that all the time. Stay in your lane. I used to talk about and still do for the last 30 years. What's your concern right now? What's your purpose? What's your why? What's the best use of your time? Is it focusing on someone else's bad behaviour? Giving them all that power? Even if they don't even know you're doing it? 
Or is it staying in your lane, focusing on your own business? We spend so much time crossing over boundaries. We have a kaleidoscope, we have a pad. A, a, yeah, we tend to look into everyone else's life thinking that their life somehow is easier, is better, is, is different, is what we want, rather than actually creating the best life for ourselves, That's our job. Our job, our only job is to create the best life for ourselves in the best way, I like to add. <laughs> it doesn't mean going around, hurting everybody else, taking everything from everybody else because your needs are better than everyone else's. No. I don't think so. We are the happiest, the most contented the most fulfilled, the most driven, the most successful when we find happiness in the smallest ways. Knowing where your boundaries lie, knowing what's important to you, knowing what matters to you in life creates a happy life. So if somebody cuts you off when you're driving, just wish them a safe, safe journey. Stay in your peaceful mind. If someone does something that's unkind and uncaring and thoughtless, you might say to them, that's caused me distress or that's been hurtful. You might explain why. But then move on and let it go. We hold on to things in our mind. We ruminate, we catastrophize, we overthink, we dwell on things for far too long. Rather than having boundaries, our mindset, emotional boundaries, psychologically protecting our peace of mind. To what end? How does it work for you? People say it's hard, it's hard. Well, you know that saying. Nothing that is worth and worthwhile comes easy. We have to be prepared to put the time and energy in. Recently, I signed up. It was actually in June I signed up, but I started the process in July and I committed to doing a pain management program. And it It meant that a Tuesday and a Friday, I was consistently turning up and showing up for 12 weeks, three months, okay? And no matter what was going on, no matter how I felt, I committed to doing that. And there was a group of us that were there. And by the end of it, a lot of people dwindled off for different reasons. There was one day I couldn't make it, but I messaged and said, I'm training that day and I'm actually on site. I'm actually going to the premises. So I can't get back to do this, but I'm going to make a commitment to doing the, the training, the course work the day before. And I did. And I was like, isn't that what you do when you make a commitment and sign up for things? You follow through on it. Someone said to me, oh, it's hard though. And I said, not really. If you sign up, you commit to something, you set a boundary. And your mindset is about making it happen. Your focus is about intentionality. Your intention is always about how do I make it work? How do I follow through on it? People like, oh, that's okay for you. Why? What makes me different from you? People say, oh, but I've got so much going on in my life. I don't have the time. I'm not sitting twiddle my thumbs. I'm hectic, right? But it's organising, it's planning, it's preparing, it's prepping things. It's my boundaries. It's my boundaries. 
It's also about the core values of respect and integrity and loyalty. If I say I'll do it, I follow through on it. Now, if there'd been an absolute emergency or if something had come up, as something did, the training course, I then put aside another day and said, I can't do it this day, the set day, I can do it another day. And the reason why I'm sharing this is I'm inviting you to think about in your life the intentionality, the commitment that you make, because it's not really about the things that you're committing to. It's about you're committing to yourself. You're honouring you and committing to yourself. Whether it's a fitness commitment, whether it's exercise, whether it's eating healthily, whether it's following through on a retirement plan, whether it's wanting to travel and go somewhere, whether it's achieving a hobby or an interest, whether it's getting more support to do with friendships, whatever it is, do you have the right boundaries set around with your intention? Are you being intentional about making these things happen? We're very good as human beings when we think about pleasure and pain and the pleasure pain principle. We're very good at talking ourselves out of things because we We naturally are driven towards the thing that's going to be the least difficult, the least awkward, the least painful. So we aim for the pleasurable thing, the easiest, the funnest, right? The least hard. Because that's a psychological thing. Our job is to retrain, is to hold fire, is to stop and set things in motion to be more intentional to make things work. We're firing off the right kind of neural activity, the neurons and the neural pathways. So we're holding these, firing these neural pathways. It's creating the right intention and the right pathways. So we have healthier mindsets. We're achieving what we want to. We have to dare to dream, to believe, to receive, to achieve. Dream to believe, to receive, to achieve. I say that all the time. If you see what my vision is and you see what my company motto is and step up CMG, you'll see it's dare to dream your dreams and make them your reality. I started that 22, 23 gosh, nearly 25 years ago. We can create through the boundaries we set. And when we start faltering and we start trying to talk ourselves out of things, well, I know I was going to go to that pain management or I know I was going to go to the training or I know I was going to do that course. I know I was meant to get that house or I knew. But, and then we get the the reasons, excuses. Like people say the reasonable excuses. The reasons and the excuses. We stop. And we check ourselves, And we say, hold on a minute. Is this me looking for the least difficult, the easiest route, the least awkward? Are my boundaries in place? Am I staying intentional? Am I staying focused? Am I maintaining the right mindset? Or do I really not want it in the first place? Do I not want it hard enough? Am I not focused enough? Am I not driven enough? Does it matter? Or does it not matter enough? Yeah. Boundaries are my thing. I have clear boundaries. And when people cross them, they know they have crossed them. (laughs) It doesn't mean to say I can't be flexible. But what I don't like is people that are being intentional with their thoughtlessness and their carelessness. People who deliberately know that what they're doing is about them and it's being selfish rather than being self-full. 
when I talk within my clinical practice about being self-full, that's about taking care of you. That's about doing the things that you need to do, not just want to do, not indulgent things, but that's about doing the things that you need to do to safeguard your mental health. That's different. But when you do something that's crossing over and hurting someone, harming someone, being thoughtless, selfish, that's no nice. And that, to me, is not acceptable. And often people, when they do something like that, they go into justification mode. What are your boundaries? Where are your boundaries? Do you recognise other people's boundaries? Do you respect their boundaries? It can be straightforward things, or they seem straightforward to some people. Respecting somebody's space, respecting somebody's privacy. It could be as simple as just asking when you phone someone, is this the right time? Or stop, pause and think before you make that phone call at three o'clock in the morning. Right? If you know you're calling someone and there's a time difference, have you thought about what time it would be for them? When I'm given someone's mobile I consider that they're waiting to hear from me by always look to try and make contact in, in a, a reasonable time. I often receive contacts from people at all hours. And I I mean calls. I get calls at all hours. I didn't think you'd pick up. You phone my mobile. Uh, you phone my mobile at three o'clock or half three in the morning and I'm thinking, there's an emergency. <laughs> so I'm picking up. <laughs> I'm not expecting somebody to phone me at 3.30 in the morning. What's happened? Is there something happened? It used to be. It used to be. People had to wait. We've lost that sense of patience. The boundaries are crossed. People send texts and expect to be responded to. They'll send a communication and they see that it's been read or ticked, that it's been seen. And then they're, why is it not being responded to? Why have they not responded? <gasps> And they go into this dialogue within their head. That's it. That's right. I can't believe. Why have they not done that? Why, what's happened? Is there something wrong? No. They're just busy. Just because they've read it. Maybe they'll go back to it. Maybe they don't feel they have to respond to it. We forget that people have autonomy. They have the right to respond or not respond. Just because we've sent something posted something, went into someone's space, boundaries. Technology has crossed over people's personal space, people's boundaries. We get contacts and correspondence from people we don't know, people we have never heard of, people we've never speak, spoken to, even if they're celebrities and well-known, we don't know them. We know their persona, but we don't know these individuals. And very few people will say, do I have your permission? Is it okay for me to contact you? So that's why consent and that's why giving consent had to be set up. Because unsolicited correspondence, but still we get inundated by spams and fishes and scams and skists and all these different types of correspondences. Crossing over our boundaries. How do you protect your boundaries? Do you know where your boundaries are? Are you thinking, Catherine, I get it. I get it. I know my boundaries are, are okay. I get this is important. Or 
I think they're going too deep in this, Catherine. There are certain things that matter to us. And when somebody crosses your boundary, that's when your temper goes. That's when you feel hurt, offended, upset. So the next time something provokes you, ask yourself, what boundary has been crossed here? Understanding, recognising helps us then to name it, to be able to identify it, to then be able to say, can you step back? You're too close. This invading my personal space, that's a boundary. Yeah. Well, I know you want to speak to me right now, but I'm not in a space to speak to you. Psychologically right now, in my mind, I, I, I need to process this. That's, that's a boundary. I know this person's taking that parking space. Right? I just think that's rude. I think that's... Am I going to keep my peace of mind here? Am I going to get really upset about it? It's choice. What's my choice? Which route do I go down? Peace of mind or ruminating and getting upset and worked up about it? Thinking about in a workspace, how many times people cross your boundaries. Don't respect how you work. Don't respect your time. Don't get back to you when you need to. Overwork, overload, reaching burnout. Boundaries are constantly crossed. Do you recognise them? Are you a stay-at-home parent looking after children? Boundaries constantly being crossed. Are you setting boundaries? Are you reasonable and realistic about your boundaries? Do you realise where they are? Are you retired? You're in a different mindset, maybe in a different pace. Other people's boundaries are different from yours. I was talking to somebody retired the other day and they said they had realised only recently that they were out of that constant on-the-go, constant having to be on-the-go all the time. And it was only pointed out to them that the things that they worry and stress about, people in their life, are worrying and stressing about some of those things sometimes, but a lot of the time their worry and stress is taken over by work and journeys and other things. And I said, tell me, what what's that meaning for you? And they said, I realise that I spend too much time on my own thinking about things, holding on to things, and I need to learn to set better boundaries and let go. I sit at the window and I watch things go by and I'm just constantly focused on the small details, the small things, the day-to-day things. And I forget that when people come home that they haven't had the time to think about these things because they've been off doing other things, they've been working. And they've had multiple other things taking over. I've sat there all day and it's just what I've thought about and I haven't put myself in their place and set that boundary. We get more of what we see, what we focus on. If we focus on our peace of mind, if we focus on letting go, if we focus on our boundaries and setting reasonable and realistic boundaries, if we want happiness, we have to focus and bring happiness in our life. If we want to be content, we need to bring and focus on things that are going to give us contentment. If you want to feel passion and excitement and, and adventure, then we need to focus on passion, excitement and adventure and bring those things into our life. Because it doesn't just happen. We need to do intentional actions to bring these things into our life. And then set boundaries around the things that don't. Thanks for listening. Boundaries are important to me. You probably pick up on that. And although I do have boundaries, I can be flexible around boundaries. 
and I'm often very flexible around holidays. Yeah? But particularly around my work, with time, I have to be very clear about and bounded around when my time boundaries are. I can't be flexible around time because people expect me to turn up and show up. There's certain things that boundaries need to be clear and apparent. There are other things you might come and go with, depending on who it is, where it is, what it's around. Have a good week. Enjoy whatever is set ahead for you. Thinking and bringing into your life what you need, and not just the things that you want. And be intentional around your boundaries. Until next time, like, share and download the episodes. Go back and review the episodes that are there because there are many to review. And until next time. And if you do want to hear more from me, if you want particular subjects to be covered, then feel free to message me at stepupcmg at gmail.com. Stepupcmg at gmail.com. Until next time, bye for now. This is Catherine Gallica, CMG Talk.